Welcome back to the Star Trek Critic. Today's animated episode is One of Our Planets is Missing. The Enterprise gets inside a dangerous space cloud, which is really a giant living organism. This is a great show to teach kids that communication is the way to go. The first point is lost since the start date is too close to yesteryear. Little do they know, in just four years they will again be investigating a giant space cloud. Of course, this one is much smaller. And shout out to this comparison to help the kids watching. And me too. This cloud is pretty dangerous since it is currently eating the planet Erlandra. Shout out to the animated scanner. The next point is lost since they are going to the planet Mantilles at warp 8. That is too fast since they are too close to that planet. Spock wants to know if the cloud knows to skip the inhabited planets. Kirk and McCoy debate if warning the planet will cause more panic than just save lives. The governor is Bob Wesley, who is in The Ultimate Computer, but it's James Doohan's voice. And we are now up to two eyes. Spock talks about chemical identity sensors. The animated series went all out on technical terms, which really aren't technobabble. That's four eyes. And now that the cloud swallowed the Enterprise, Spock does real technobabble. Kirk believes to fire first and ask questions later. Look closely, McCoy is standing next to Kirk, and now he's gone. So, minus one point. Here comes the cloud's mitochondria in the stomach to eat the Enterprise. Yes! Scotty speaks the fifth eye. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> the antimatter charge saves the day. Spock figures it out. Dr. McCoy says those things are going to eat them if they drop the shields. The show's title says a planet is missing, but Alondra just keeps getting smaller. They didn't mention any other missing planets either. Now for a Star Wars scene wipe, here is Robert Wesley from The Ultimate Computer. He can only evacuate some people, so he saves the children. That's age discrimination. Kirk wants their help and says for them to do a drug test. I need test. your help, gentlemen. Your analyses? Spock compares the cloud to a bull grazing in the field. Grazing here and there in the pasture of the universe. Here is a map of the cloud. They conclude that it has a mouth and a digestive system, and they could just get pooped out. But McCoy says they aren't going to make it. Kirk decides they are going to poop themselves out. This is obviously a little kid's show. This is I-6 and 7. And here we're just going to enjoy looking at the special effects of 1970s cartoon. McCoy gives the kids watching the show a comparison of the cloud to a human body, while Spock says these things are antimatter and dangerous. Captain, those villi are antimatter. Scotty stands just the way he does when he's on the bridge. And this might be the only shot of engineering in the animated series. The next point is lost, since you can see smears on the glass plate the Enterprise is on. Scotty suggests catching the antimatter outside to power the ship. This episode is a lot like the old movie Fantastic Voyage. And this is the only time we see the spark plugs of the Enterprise's engineering section. Scotty. Scotty saves the day. Yes! Kirk wants to know where the brain is. Kirk wants to destroy the brain, but the others say, maybe we should talk to it first. But Kirk's like, I have to think of the people on the planet first. Spock says the only way to destroy the brain is to destroy the ship. And here is the eighth eye. And they can only evacuate 5,000 kids out of 82 million people. But his 11-year-old daughter stayed behind. Aww. Kirk says maybe we can do a Vulcan mind touch. Spock says that's impossible unless you touch it. But he can reach it with his mind, which is what I think Kirk had in mind. Spock uses his yoga pose to communicate with the cloud. And Spock is successful in making contact with the cloud. Many somethings. The animated clock looks just like the original. Spock says, let's do a switch. Oops. He's the clown. Why are they showing him pictures of Earth and not Mantilles, the planet it's going to eat? 
And why is he showing an episode of Lassie's Rescue Rangers? You know it's a tense situation when it's McCoy who wants to blow up the ship. Spock convinces the cloud not to eat the planet and go back to where it came from. The moral of the story for the kids watching is communication is the best route. They're going to escape through the cloud's nose. And Spock was pretty impressed with the experience. One of our planets is missing gets a score of 96. And there will be more clouds in space to follow. That's all for now. Thanks for viewing. Be sure to check out my other videos and playlists. And most important of all, click that like button, the share button, and that subscribe button.